You know, this guy makes a claim in this video that I came in and told him that I beat your ass was basically his words. Jessica, in your words, did I beat you up? That, no, it was not like that. And um, just to add to it, like, I remember it was nothing, it was not, nothing like that. We were just verbally altercating and it was me pushing you and you trying to stop me from pushing you. And it, I, I think that's all that I remember from it, to be honest. And like, I just remember the verbal part of it very heavily. All right, let's not waste a lot of time with this. Let's go, go ahead and get right into this. This is gonna be a long video. There's a lot to address in this video. And I was gonna do this vlog style, but I figured if I did it that way, I would forget to include some things. What you may or may not know is there's been some pretty wild accusations that have been tossed around about me. Just recently from Yanni and Yanni's YouTube channel, Prison Junkies, and also from a guy named Levi who claims that he is the co-founder of After Prison Show and also claims that I beat my ex-girlfriend, Jessica, and that we were selling drugs together. Man, I mean, I guess there's even more than all of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this off by addressing the allegations against me. Then I'm going to go ahead and start dissecting each of these different things because there's a couple of different things. Yanni, Yanni's YouTube channel, what Yanni's really doing, the ulterior motives, all of that. Just bear with me in this video. So first, the allegations about me beating my ex-girlfriend. That's a very serious allegation to rise, to raise right there. And they even were able to incorporate a little bit of a phone call that Levi had with Jessica. I did not beat my ex-girlfriend. I did not do this. We had a rocky relationship for sure. And, you know, I was just coming home from prison. We argued a lot. No discredit to this chick at all. You know, she met me while I was locked up. We didn't know each other out here in the free world. And I'm coming home after seven years in prison trying to adapt. I'm not even justifying. We had a rocky relationship, sad enough to admit. She was trying to be there for me. I was trying to just exist. I keep sounding like I'm trying to explain this. Let me say this real quick. I've got this phone call that I just had with Jessica and I want to include this little bit of it right here. Look, I don't want to take up too much of your time. There's only two more questions I want to ask you and I want your honest answer to both of these questions. Do you feel like Levi tried to pressure you into saying anything about me? Uh I would say yeah because he did ask a bunch of questions and as much as I didn't want to answer like you know he he kept dragging on with question after another question and it ended up being like an hour phone call and honestly but it really to me seemed like she, he was trying to you know dig something that he can you know use for his video to go against you. I hate that she got brought into this situation. I'm grateful that she was willing to address this situation with me. And the phone call that they incorporate with in this prison junkie video trying to expose me, you know, she didn't realize that she was being recorded to be used in a video. And she doesn't say that I beat her ass. This is what this guy Levi says, that I came in and, say, and said that I just beat her ass. I'll include the full phone call that I just had with my ex at the end of this video. But to reiterate, I did not beat this girl. I'm not a woman beater. And this is just a blatant attempt to try to discredit and make me look bad and destroy me. Like we've seen a few times, sadly enough. Now a question that I hope that you'll ask yourself is why would somebody make this up? Well. Look at the sources where this is coming from. One guy who's claiming to be the co-founder of After Prison Show who reaches out to my ex-girlfriend saying that he wants to expose me and make this video doing so. And then he ends up going on another guy's YouTube channel whose only sole mission is to see me fail and to see him win and who is mad at me for a number of reasons. But more on that moving forward. So again, I ask you, 
you know, why would somebody lie about this? Well, why wouldn't a person like either of these two lie? When they both have strong ill will toward me, one feels like I should have brought him along when After Prison Show succeeded. And the other, again, we'll get into him just a little bit further in this video. I want to start this by, oh yeah, and the other allegation, selling the drugs. There is some truth to what Levi did say. And yeah, we did sell the shrooms. Like one time or one run, we, we did sell some shrooms. I was just coming home from prison. You know, I was trying, I, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know why I did it. I regretted it when I did it. And yeah, he was right about that. I did sell some mushrooms. We sold to all of his friends. Levi was a coke addict. As much as this guy is gonna try to paint himself as the victim and the boohoo for me in this little video that he did with Yanni, uh, I'm really gonna set this record straight right now. You may notice that like as I'm sharing these things with you, I don't really, I'm not stressing this. I'm not trying to be super overly, overtly serious about this, even though these are very serious allegations that you rise, that you're raised against me saying that I'm a woman beater, where we've, I've got the phone call, the clear cut phone call with my ex and her exact response to that exact question as to whether or not I beat her, I abused her. But there is a little bit of truth to some of the things that Levi said, and I wanna address those things. You know, the shroom situation, yeah, there was some truth to that. I seriously regret that. Oh, Joe, you're no different than nobody else? Well, when I came home from prison, maybe I wasn't. After prison show was not even really a thing. I mean, it might have just been beginning I didn't really think that this thing was gonna take off. Of course, I hoped that it would, but I'm also trying to figure out how am I gonna survive out here? No boohoo from me working some, you know, pretty rando and low paying jobs. Dudes out here want 20 bucks an hour. I was working for Little Caesars making seven bucks an hour. I only worked there for two days. And then I was working at the temp service making between like seven and $13 an hour. $20? Even at my best job, I wasn't smelling that, but I'm getting off topic. I was making $14 at the concrete pouring plant. There is some truth that Levi spoke. The shroom thing, there was, there was truth to that. We did. We did it like one time and I regretted it immediately and then I stopped. And I haven't done it since and I wouldn't do it since. And you know, I've got just so much to live up to and to lose at this point. So yeah, there was some truth to that. And I don't even really think that it's, you know, it's so much blatant lies except for the whole beating my girlfriend thing. I think they really ran with that one. Like, what's the worst that we could do and blow something completely out of proportion to make Joe just look horrendous? And I think that that's what they figured that they had. Yanni, was this the best that you had? Was this it? Cause you're gonna, boy, the feelings are gonna fly in this one. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go in on you, dude. I almost did it a couple of weeks ago and then I pulled back from that, but we'll get to that. So more on Levi. Who is this guy, Levi? Is Levi really the co-founder of After Prison Show? Maybe to a certain degree, yeah, kind of, but not really. Not in my opinion. And at this point, forget Levi. I don't owe this dude nothing. Hence the fact he didn't go nowhere with me. And I'll explain why. When I first came home from prison, I did put an ad on Craigslist. Ad Le As Levi said, looking for somebody who knew something about video work. Levi responded. This guy didn't have anything going for him at the time. And he would bring a camera to the table a camera that shot in 720p, which should be a crime in itself. I'm trying to act like I know anything about color grading and 4K downgraded to 1080p. Yanni, you know all about that, right? But um, I shouldn't make jokes. So Levi brought a camera to the table and he was also my ride. Yeah, I wanna really say that Levi was my bitch, but that might be a little too harsh. But you know what? After what you just tried to put out there about me, this little sob story, oh, Joe, woe is me. Joe should have took me. I'm the real reason. Are you now? Did you have this idea for After Prison Show while you were in prison? The truth of the matter is, is Levi was there for probably like a month, maybe two months. And in that time frame, yeah, we filmed a a few videos, we did film a few videos together, and I, I don't wanna discredit that. We probably filmed like, you know, maybe 10 videos together, none of which ever did anything, right? 
So let me break down why I don't owe this dude Levi nothing and forget this dude Levi who, what, you want your 15 minutes of fame right now? You want to come after me? Because why? You're mad that I didn't bring you with me? You're jealous? You're scorned? You've got every reason. If anybody's got a reason to be mad at me, I can actually kind of understand yours, Levi, except I feel no remorse about this situation at all. And again, here is why. We worked together for like two months. We probably made like 10 videos together. After Prison Show wasn't doing nothing. I came home with a little bit of money. In fact, my father gave me a little bit of money when I came home, $5,000 to try to get my shit together. And of that money, I used it to first get an apartment with my ex who you said that I was using, more on her phone call coming later in this video. But I also used that money to pay you. Once the money ran out, when the money goes, the honeys leave. Isn't that what Jay-Z said? The money was gone, so Levi was as well. I couldn't afford to have him rocking with me anymore. You, after Prison Show wasn't even smelling a first viral video at all. It wasn't looking hopeful for us at all. We went our separate ways. And what I relate this to, pay attention now, what I relate this to is starting a business. Let's say you and somebody else start a business. You start the business. You're trying to start a business. You're not really getting any work whatsoever. And you have to go your separate ways. And guess what? You got to go find work elsewhere, which I would when me and Levi went our separate ways. I was actually working at the concrete pouring job, working 16 hour days, like six or seven days a week, busting my ass, coming home on my break, riding my little moped back to my apartment, filming videos. Where was Levi at during this time? God only knows. You know, busting my ass, working this job, coming home, filming these videos, thinking of videos, and I don't even think I'm really in contact with Levi all that much at all, if at all. Then a couple of months later, I filmed this video. Great idea for a video. How to make a prison tattoo gun. On my break. Levi weren't a part of After Prison Show during this point. Hadn't been a part of After Prison Show for a couple of months at this point. And then it would be like six months later, or maybe not six months, like four months later, and all the while I'm still filming videos. Matter of fact, I remember it like this. I came home from prison. Levi probably worked with me. Let's say he worked with me for three months. And that's being generous because it was probably more like two. So Levi's with me for three months. And then I'm working my concrete porn job and it was 10 months later that After Prison Show blew up. So we're talking about almost a little bit more than half of a year that this dude ain't been with me. We're not talking about a week or two, like, oh, he just left and then boom, After Prison Show blew up and I said, forget about you. Levi wasn't investing in this thing, putting his blood, sweat and tears into this thing. I didn't owe this dude nothing. When After Prison Show blew up, it blew up because of me. Not because of anything that he did. But yet he feels entitled like I owe him something? And did Levi reach out to me a couple of years later? Yeah, he did. And did I want to bring him back? I probably thought about bringing him back, but then I also thought to myself, why? I don't need this guy. And I didn't want to bring him back. That's the reality of it. I just didn't want to bring him back. I didn't owe this dude nothing. And I didn't care. Because what you learn in this is this is cutthroat city. Look at these videos that they're making about me and why are they making these videos? Do both of these people, Levi and Yanni, have an ulterior motive in this? Levi is scorned like hell and feels like I owe him 50%. Dude, if you knew the amount of money that I've made in this, y'all would be making these videos every single day. I have done extremely well. I have done extremely well. I don't owe you nothing. And what have I done since becoming pretty successful? I've tried to help other people. Didn't help you. And yeah, I can understand you would be upset about that. Oh my God, Louie is dreaming. Shh, hear that? Louie is dreaming. I wish I could. Oh, I wonder what he's dreaming about. <laughs> he's probably dreaming about the views that this video is going to get. Chase him. Chase him, Lou. Chase him. Oh my God, and Lucy's standing right over him. This is the cutest thing in the world. <clears throat> so, I hope I addressed the Levi situation enough. We sold the mushrooms. He lies and blows the whole, I mean, he lies about me beating Jessica's ass. He called her, filmed a phone call without her consent. They used this and, you know, I'm letting Jessica know that, you know, you can contact YouTube and tell them to 
take this video down because it is a bunch of BS. This is a blatant attempt to sabotage and destroy me and why. Levi's mad, let's go ahead and move on to who has been wanting me to address them for the longest time, old Yanni. I said earlier that it was just a couple of weeks ago where I had filmed a video, edited a video, almost was ready to upload this video of me going in on Yanni. And what this was in context to was the video that Yanni did with Jellico and the snake that Yanni really is. See, you guys don't know Yanni. What you guys see is some color grading and you know some good camera angles and some 4K footage downgraded to 1080p. Yanni, are you still using that dumbass Samsung camera that you got? You might be. It actually films really good. You guys are seeing this and feeling like Yanni's the underdog. Right? That's what you feel like. Like Joe is up here and he's always trying to step on Yanni. And for a little bit of time, I'm not going to lie, I felt a certain type of a way. I felt like, forget Yanni, I still feel like that. I feel like that to the fullest even more now with this BS that just came out. But like, where do I begin with this? You guys don't know this guy. And I do. You know, I was locked up with this dude. This is one of the most competitive people that I've ever met in my life. I'll never forget seeing him on the soccer field. He sucked at soccer. Hope you don't take offense to that. Trust me, there'll be more in this video for you to do that. He sucked at soccer, and I'll never forget like people making fun of him on the soccer field and him getting in his little feelings and running full steam ahead like, like Thomas the Tank Engine or whatever that thing is called. Like running full speed for the soccer ball and kicking it across the fence. Like you cannot possibly envision this, and I hope you can paint this picture of this guy getting so butt hurt because of something that somebody said about him. Oh, Yanni, you suck at soccer. <laughs> Doom! I'll take my ball and leave. Surprised he didn't get his ass kicked for that. But this prison we were at was super soft anyway. So anyways, super competitive guy. But he's also a very talented dude. And that's something that I'll never take away from him. Uh, he's good at doing videos. He's a good actor. He's been to film school and acting school. He's an actor, which means that a lot of what he does is probably fake. But that's just me being bitter. And I'm going to try not to be bitter. I'm going to try to just speak straight facts, or at least facts as I perceive them to be. Yanni was a part of After Prison Show, and then he wasn't. I brought him on after he came home from jail. I wanted him to be a part of this thing, and I, I knew that he was a great talent. I knew that he would add so much to this, and I knew that he would bring a lot to the table. But then, you know, Yanni would relapse, not once, but twice. And after the second time, you know, I had to cut ties with this dude. Now, mind you, something that is just a little bit of conspiracy theory from, from me, but it kind of, I, I want to put this out there, you know, Yanni brought Big Dave to the table. Yanni has also just recently done a video with Big Dave, which I consider, what did I consider that video? Oh, damage control for what I'm getting ready to share with you right now, which may or may not be true, but there's definitely some legs to this. So let me tell you about this. When Yanni brought Big Dave to the table and I you know, heard about the situation Big Dave was in, been in the same pair of boxers for 14 days, I felt super bad, super compelled to try to help because Joe does genuinely try to help people. I put together a GoFundMe. That GoFundMe raises $1,500. I give all of that money to Big Dave. Big mistake that I made. He would go and relapse. We wouldn't hear from him. He would have a heart attack from smoking crack and he would be in the street. The paramedics would find him. Yeah, I would end up refunding everybody the money from that GoFundMe because Joe just tries to play fair all the time, even in the midst of so much BS. But one thing I want you guys to keep in mind is this. You know, Big Dave would relapse with this $1,500 at the same time, the same day that Yanni did. And again, Yanni was a part of After Prison Show. Yanni brought Big Dave to the table. Now, both of these guys are adamant in, in, in saying that they didn't do this together. However, one thing that Yanni would tell me off camera and again, this is basically just some hearsay, sort of like what Levi was talking about, about me abusing this ex-girlfriend of mine, but neither here nor there. Yanni would tell me, hey, look, because I would ask him, yo, did you go out there and get high with Big Dave? No, no, I didn't do that. I didn't do that. But Big Dave would ask me for this phone number and I would give it to him for this connect for these drugs. Yanni, why you got that phone number? Oh yeah, you relapsed once already. So I share that with you guys because whether or not Big Dave and Yanni actually got high together, which it's very unlikely that they didn't, you know, when more signs point to yes, it usually means yes, right? 
Maybe not in all cases, but maybe in a lot it does. Whether or not they actually did get high together, Yanni is the one that put the loaded gun in Big Dave's hand by giving him the phone number. Yeah, I feel like Yanni put the gun in Big Dave's hand right there. I feel like Yanni is the reason why Big Dave relapsed. Now, I might be wrong saying that, but again, that's just my opinion. When I would have to cut ties with Yanni and then, you know, Yanni would OD in the parking lot and I would just happen to see that and how weird that that was. It almost made me feel like Yanni was following me. I was coming out from dinner with my wife and my brother, all these ambulances driving by, and then boom, there was Yanni right there in the parking lot, just ODing. But from there, when I cut ties, Yanni would get so butthurt about this that he would go and make this five hour live stream of nothing but lies. You know, saying what, that guy was taking candy to the playground. He was super high during this time as well, and you know, neither here nor there, but I just want you guys to know, like, when this guy gets scorn, when he gets competitive, when he feels like somebody else is winning and he should be winning, he's full speed ahead across that soccer field ready to kick that ball across the fence, meaning he's ready to kamikaze anything in his way. If he's going to fail, he wants to take it all down with him. So what does he do? He makes this five-hour live stream where he says that, you know, Joe was taking candy to the playground, and then he shows this clip from the music video, the Ramen Soup's music video, which he really had minimal uh, part of. I wrote the song, he helped me put it together, uh, he helped me put the video together, so he did have that, and, and he was a big part of the video too, and I, I don't wanna take that away from him, but I remember he, like at one point he said that like he wrote the song or something, I can't remember, he did not. But there was this clip that he's got where I was snapping on him, yo, you're getting fired as soon as we're done you know, filming this music video. And it was because, you know, I was getting mad. The video was taking way longer than it needed to to get filmed. We were spending a lot of time. I felt like we weren't taking this super serious. For whatever reason, I snapped. Let's just say Joe's a horrible person, and I snapped. Joe was mean to Yanni. So he put that in the five-hour live stream as well. And he also just put that clip in yesterday's video. Now, mind you, Keep in mind, yesterday's video was the best that he's got. He put all the cards on the table for this shit yesterday. So he puts this clip, which is so, what's the word? Ironic, because he used it in the five hour live stream. He puts the same clip in the video yesterday because yesterday is just dun, 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 super attack on Joe. Let's paint Joe out to be a monster. He's doing everything that he can to try to destroy me, right? And for what reason? For what reason? He's super mad. I've made some comments about Yanni and I've made fun of Yanni. So what? Oh yeah, and real quick about me snapping on Yanni at the video shoot saying you're fired as soon as we get done with this because Joe's the big meanie. Yo, I literally went to a lawyer about this situation trying to get a cease and desist on this dude. The lawyer said to me, he was like, yo, were you like his employer during this time? And I was like, kind of, yeah, I was paying the dude. And the lawyer was like, yo, you can talk to this guy any way that you want. I said, well, shit, thank you. That's why you make the big dollars. So two years would go by and I wouldn't, you know, talk to Yanni at all. And, you know, we wouldn't have any contact. Well, fast forward to just back earlier this year. I can't remember when it was. It might have been February or March, somewhere around there. Me and Yanni would actually get back in contact. He would actually send me a message on Twitter saying, hey, look, just want to make you aware that Jellico just reached out to me. And mind you, at this time, I had just cut ties with Jellico for catching that dope sale charge. And, you know, that was a hard thing to do because I really liked Jellico. And unfortunately, and, you know, truth be told, I really liked Yanni too. But these are just, well, Yanni's really a snake. Anyways, Yanni would reach out to me. I'll never forget I was doing the big landscaping job and he would say, hey, I just want to let you know that Jellico just reached out to me and he wants me to do an interview with him. Yanni didn't have a YouTube channel at this point. I think Jellico had like the, the mad making a difference thing going on. So Yanni says, and I told him, no, I wasn't going to do it. I didn't want to get wrapped up in the drama. So I was like, yo, Yanni, I appreciate that. Thank you for letting me know. And this would be the cause of me and Yanni becoming friendly again for a very short period of time. But I want to share something with you guys. You know, Yanni would uh, tell me, hey, look, I don't want to get involved in this drama. And he would also, you know, basically call Jellico a snitch. I want to share with you guys this message. He says, so your boy hit me up on Facebook Messenger and asked me to be his first interview on his YouTube on his new channel. I was nice about it, but pol politely declined. However, I did give him some advice that he didn't follow. Stay the F off of social media and keep your head down and keep your ass out of trouble. He ain't gonna do none of that. Joe, you already know what time it is. If this dude gets a $7,500 bond 
for a sales case while on felony probation in Virginia Beach. Get the F out of here. That tells you right there what he's capable of. And everyone he kicks it with is beyond shady. They're effing dangerous. Be careful, JoJo. That was Yanni's words right there. Basically saying that, you know, Jellica was a snitch. And he also would go on to say, you know, I also feel the same way. And he says, I hate to see you stuck with these clowns. Yanni called Jellico a clown, but then went and made a video with this dude, basically trying to boo-hoo and pity party the entire situation, saying that I turned Jellico into a laughing stock on the internet. Now, I was mad, mad as hell about this situation because me and Jellico had just gotten okay with, <laughs> again, I know this is super confusing, but me and Jellico had just gotten okay again. When I find out that Jellico and Yanni made a video, we got, me and Jellico got okay at arm's distance because of the whole rabbit rehab situation where Jellico stepped up. I would apologize to Jellico. That's getting a little ahead of ourselves. But I want to throw that in here because that would be what caused me to want to make this video about Yanni and Jellico and how both of these guys had an ulterior motive for making that video in the first place. That ulterior motive was, you know, Yanni... Jellico just wants people to feel sorry for him. Look at what I'm doing out here. Yo, I'll get you a sweater. I'll get you some work and I'll get you a ball all in the same trip. And then Yanni, all he ever wanted was the in to the after prison show views, whatever those amount to. This one will do pretty well. Or to the viewership. Yanni, I feel like, and again, this is just me thinking out loud, has always been so butthurt and competitive, running across that soccer field, thinking about the fact that all of this work he's putting into this YouTube channel, color grading and cinemagraphic content, ain't got but what, like not even 5,000 subscribers? And I put Dave on and Dave's got well over 10,000, maybe closer to 15 or 20. And then Banky, I put him on and Banky's channel's done really well. And all this hard work that Yanni's put in and he's not getting the recognition or credit for it. <laughs> Boom, soccer ball. And that may sound paranoid, Joe. You're, you're being a little paranoid talking like that, but think about it. What videos has Yanni done? You've done a video with Big Dave, I consider that damage control because I definitely think that y'all got high together on that 1500 from the After Prison Show fans, but that's just me thinking out loud. You did the video with Jellico because that was a hot topic and you know this YouTube channel you're creating with this red camera or whatever the F you're using, it deserves the recognition. After Prison Show, their videos are trash. Look at the quality. This thing's blown out right here and we got a nice lens on this camera. I don't know how to use this. Joe don't deserve that. So what? He's trying to help all these people and even tried to help me. I'm better than Joe. And Joe's not going to win. I will. You did the video with Big Dave. You did the video with Jellico. Now, the creme de la creme. Because none of that worked in the past and because I didn't address it. Because, see, that's what you really want. You really just want me to address this shit. See, we're getting to it now. If we continue to provoke Joe, we know that Joe's gonna go, and Joe's gonna go and make a video, and that's gonna draw more attention to my channel, where I've been color grading all week, where my only real claim to fame is riding the coattail off of a guy that didn't do anything but try to give me a chance, and I effed that up and tried to sabotage and destroy him. Well, you're getting what you want right now, you old prison junkie. Kind of ironic name for a YouTube channel. You're getting what you want. You wanted me to address the situation, so I am. You want to try to paint me out as this horrible person? Here we are. Let's address some things. And then what other better person to go get than a guy who claims that he's the co-founder of this thing, that he deserves 50%. I said that I filmed a video about Yanni Angelico and I never did anything with it. Had it edited, ready to go. Well, the reason I didn't is because I felt like I was just overreacting, I guess. I think that's what I was telling myself. Joe, you sound like you're just bitching. Oh, Jellico shouldn't have done no video with Yanni and people should see through this shit. He just wants people to feel sorry for him and Yanni just wants to get some views. That's all it's about is some clout. Show, let the world see what I'm really doing. Look at this quality content that I'm creating. I'm so much better than Joe. Yeah, that was the real reason why I didn't do anything with it is because I didn't want to give Yanni the recognition that he does not deserve. Dude is a freaking snake. And his only MO, his only motive at this point is to see me fail. You're just so mad at me you just want to see me fail. And if you don't believe me, just look at the history of the videos that he's created on Prison Junkies. 
everything deals with me. It's almost a, it's almost an obsession this dude's got with me. You don't deserve none of this. What are you doing that's so much better than me besides creating better looking videos? You don't help nobody. You can't even help yourself. And in fact, that's all you really want to do is just help yourself. You just want to be known. You're in this for the clout, for the fame, for the money, because you know that I've done exceptionally well. And you're also in this to see you win and me lose, which unfortunately for you, I'm going to still do me regardless. I'm okay. Whether people believe in you or they decide to hate me because of what you do, I'm going to do me regardless. And I hope that from this video, I've really been able to address a lot of things and really been able to show people your true colors because you are fake. You're as fake as they come. Trying to take away from me because you mad? Spreading blatant, malicious lies, blowing shit out of proportion and really twisting shit up. Again, that conversation with my ex, that's coming at the end of this video. And shame on you for going and, like, that's just going to a real low place right there. But again, you laid all the cards on the table for this one. One other thing that I want to address real quick before we get to this phone call. You know, the initial, when me and Yanni would get back in contact because he reached out because of the Jellico situation and we got cool. We did get cool for probably a couple of days, maybe a week. We were talking on the phone. And it was really good to be able to talk to that guy. Like, I genuinely miss those conversations because he is an intelligent guy. And he's talented. A manipulator and a con man as well. Used car salesman. Don't ever forget that. That's literally what he was doing prior to trying to be uh, the responsible for the sole takedown of After Prison Show. But we talked for a little while and we talked about maybe doing something. Oh, I don't know. You know, I said, Yanni, you know, maybe you should. I might have even told him, you know, maybe you should start a YouTube channel. I don't know, you know, I don't know. If I did, I'm sure that's the reaction that I got. But anyways, we would lose contact and it wouldn't be but like maybe a month later, he would pop up with this channel intro for his Prison Junkies thing, which I took as a complete shot. Like uh, just a complete slap in the face. Like, okay, here's Yanni. He's going to try to create a prison YouTube channel. People may know him from after prison show and he's going to try to just be so much better and again if you think that i'm being paranoid just look at the content that he's created it's all after prison show all in an effort to discredit after prison show and to make what himself look better and even if he's not going to tell you that he's trying to make himself look better look at the amount of work that he's putting into these videos he is putting it all on the line for people to say you know what this is the steven spielberg of youtube right here look at this guy is that color grading is that premiere final shot? Final cut? Is that a 4K camera? Look at the quality of this content. Don't let that get lost on you. Don't let the fact that this dude is a fucking snake get lost on you. You know, this is a guy who runs these little trolls. Like, he is literally their ringleader. There's the Reddit, the After Prison Show subreddit, which is so malicious and just so nasty. You know, the amount of disrespect that they show for my wife the messages that they'll send to my wife, Yanni has even made fun of. Yanni has even made fun of and encouraged laughing about the infertility that me and my wife have dealt with. And just to let that really resonate a little bit further, you know, we were just, we wore just in IVF round number four. And it was last week on my wife's birthday. After, just you know, a few days prior, they had told her that she was pregnant when we transferred two embryos. On her birthday, oh, mind you, that was on a Wednesday. On, I think, Sunday or Monday, she woke up at 2 o'clock in the morning with a whole bunch of bleeding. And she went to the doctor and they told her everything was fine and that her numbers were increasing. And then on her birthday, she had to go back. And they called her the next day, which was the day before her birthday, and said, hey, don't get your hopes up. And then she went back on her birthday and found out that she had a miscarriage for the fourth time. But yeah, let's make fun of that, Yanni. You're a good guy. And you little trolls over there on the APS Reddit, you're probably wet in your pants right now because I even mentioned your name. Yeah, y'all are pretty horrible for all of that, too. I don't like Yanni. I used to like him. I used to think that he was a pretty swell guy. And if he would have started his YouTube channel and, you know, gone his own direction, I would have definitely been okay with that. But he didn't. He started his YouTube channel symbolically as the soccer field that he was running across at full speed. 
and all he wants to do is see me fail. And he has tried to dredge up anything that he possibly can, tried to get as many people to run with him as he possibly can. So many people who, for whatever reason, don't like me. Maybe I've said something mean to them and I've hurt their feelings. And he's got a fair amount of people who are really against me, who are right there for him because of that color grading, I guess. And I know it's been said that, you know, I, I was mad at Yanni for starting the YouTube channel. And well, that's the reason why, because I always felt like all he was doing was just trying to be better than me. It wasn't about, you know, helping people or anything like that. It wasn't about anything genuine, in my opinion. It was always just a competition. It is. So even after all of this, I know that there's going to be people who still feel the way that they feel. They probably think that I'm a horrible person. And there's going to be a lot of people who see the truth. You know, it's sad that this guy Levi got like left, but I didn't owe him anything. And it's simple as that. He was scorned and Yanni is just as vindictive, narcissistic, conniving as they come. I wanted to address all of this in the best possible way that I could. I hope I was able to do so. I hope that you'll leave a like on this video because I know that this thing is gonna get plenty of dislikes. Uh, no matter what, even with this phone call that I'm about to play for you guys, no matter what, there's gonna be people who still just don't believe me. And that's okay. But I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up with this phone call. And I'll look forward to hearing what you guys have to say down in the comments. In other news, this was supposed to be a vlog day today. I'm working with a new guy and trying to help this guy. I've got a moped of his to go pick up. He's homeless, and I'm trying to help him not be that anymore. So even in the midst of just blatant attacks on my character and everything that After Prison Show and I am, I'm still out here trying to do some good. I'll end this and leave you guys with this phone call that I just had with my ex. I'm getting ready to call Jessica right now and get her side of this. She's agreed to do this phone call. Hello? Hey Jessica, how you doing? Hey, good. How are you holding up? Hey, I'm doing pretty good. I apologize for calling you under these conditions, um, but I appreciate you taking the time to talk to me. It's okay. It's no worries. Look, the first thing that I want to say is, uh, I want to ask you, are you okay with me recording this call to be able to use this in a video? Mm-hmm. I appreciate that. Uh, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but obviously, I know that you know, there's been a video that's come out against me uh, where Levi, I guess, had a phone call with you, and some pretty crazy things were said, and I want to just get some clarification on that. So, thank you again for you know, being willing to talk to me about this. Yeah, no, no problem. All right, the first thing that I want to ask you is, obviously, did, did Levi reach out to you, and why did he reach out to you? He did. Um, he reached out to me because he wanted to interview me um, because he said he was putting together a video um, to expose you, basically. Okay. And what was your reaction to that or what was your response to that? Well, I ignored him the first time he messaged me on Facebook Messenger and then he reached out to me again. But this is the second time he reached out to my husband's uh, cousin and um, that's when I kind of got upset. So I actually messaged him that time and replied to him. And, um, and I basically told him, this is the past for me and I don't really want to, you know, revisit the past and rehash everything when I'm, you know, married and we're, we're both moved on. We got, you know, our spouses now and there's no reason to go back into the past. And so I told him to actually, you know, think about not doing this and for him to move on as well and not to dwell in this. So you weren't, so obviously you were not okay with him doing this. No, because I told him that this is hurting him uh, emotionally, like, like, um, how do you call it? Like, because it was stressing him out. I could, I could see that. And it's like he's putting all, all his focus on trying to expose you. So I just told him that this is not a healthy, you know, behavior. And for him to, you know, go find focus on something else that he can actually, you know, make better life out of. Yeah. But, 
Well, I want to say this real quick, you know, no disrespect to you and yours. I know that you're moved on and happily married, as am I, and I cannot apologize enough for you getting drug into this. Look, I want to go a little bit further. You would end up having a phone call with Levi uh, where they would actually use a part of that phone call in this video that they've put out. And, you know, obviously you didn't want, you were not okay with them using this in the video, right? Not at all. Like, Levi never even mentioned it when I was on the phone with him. And... I found this out yesterday because some random person messaged me with the link saying, you know, is this you? So I obviously checked it out and obviously it was a phone conversation. So I reached out to Levi and I asked him, you know, what's going on? Like there's people messaging me and um, trying to do a fact check. And, um, and I said, I hope you didn't use, you know, I think I said, I hope you didn't use the phone recording without my consent. Because um, as I was messaging him, I was watching the video and I haven't gotten to the ending part yet where I was, you know, my voice was coming out. And then as soon as I messaged him that, my voice was coming out on that video. So, well, uh, did he respond to you when you messaged him about this? He did. He said... He, I'll give him a couple minutes because he's trying to get home or something and then he said he's going to call me but um, but he never did yeah look I don't want to take up too much of your time there's only two more questions I want to ask you and I want your honest answer to both of these questions do you feel like Levi tried to pressure you into saying anything about me uh, I would say yeah because he did ask bunch of questions and as much as I didn't want to answer like you know he he kept dragging on with question after another question and it ended up being like an hour phone call and honestly but it really to me seemed like she, he was trying to you know dig something that he can you know use for his video to go against you and um, and he was basically saying that I am like the one that you know witnessed everything from the beginning so it would be really credible for me to say all this stuff um you know, versus him saying all this stuff and i kept telling him i'm not gonna you know do anything about this and i don't want any affiliation with you know that youtube stuff or anything like that so well the final question i want to ask you is you know levi makes these claims that i beat you up i want your honest answer to this your honest response to this when i ask you did I ever beat you up? So, Levi, he talks about choking me up or something. He talks about you choking me up or something like that in the video. And this is years back, so I can't really recall exactly what it what really happened. But if if anything, you know, like I told you, uh, if that happened, I don't think it was very serious because, like, I. You know, I, I would have definitely feel that pain or something to this day. I don't feel any of that. And not only that, like we were, you know, I think it was mostly verbal, the altercation that we were, you know, going back and forth. It was, and yeah, there were some, you know, items that were being thrown and stuff. I remember that. And, um, and I was, I remember provoking you a lot. And then, um, and I don't even remember Levi actually being there with us when this happened i remember him after like after everything happened and i was like storming out you know i'm sure that levi was there for an argument that we had and not to revisit you know not to drag up the past or anything like that but we definitely had some rocky arguments i want to ask you again and i you know you're talking about the choking incident. You know, this guy makes a claim in this video that I came in and told him that I beat your ass was basically his words. Jessica, in your words, did I beat you up? That, no, it was not like that. And um, just to add to it, like, I remember it was nothing, it was not, nothing like that. We were just verbally altercating and it was me pushing you and you trying to stop me from pushing you. And it, I, I think that's all that I remember from it, to be honest. 
and like I just remember the verbal part of it very heavily um and I know that like you know we we didn't yeah we we had very rocky relationships so we were fighting constantly and um and it wasn't like if I felt like threatened for my life you know I would have gone to the police (laughs) I know (laughs) you know so um I don't it wasn't like beating my ass or anything like that I want to thank you, Jessica. I don't want to take up too much of your time. You know, you got brought into a situation that you should have never gotten brought into. You're happily moved on and married, and I wish nothing but success and happiness for you and your husband. And I want to thank you for helping me to try to clarify this situation to the best that it could be. Sure. Um, Joe, um, because I think, like, a lot of allegations against you, it's just very misconstrued, and they've just been, like, I don't know, they were just kind of like, it's not even true. Well, I'm still talking with Jessica. Uh, We were just talking for a little bit, but she wanted to include this next part, so I started filming again. Uh, What what did you want to say? So, um, like, there's allegations that you had used women, you know, to come home to from prison, right? Right. And... I mentioned that too and it, in the video he mentions that you use me to come home to and that was definitely not true and you know it because you had you got your money remember from your dad yeah and you got that Newport News home with your money and then I moved into that place from Northern Virginia and you got it ready for me and I remember this so um that the time i was living in northern virginia and we were trying to make this relationship work so i had moved over here to virginia virginia beach but so well another um, thing that i want to mention is that money that you mentioned that i got from my father was like five thousand dollars and that money was a lot that money was used to not only help us get a place but also was the money that i used to pay levi when he was a part of this thing oh wow that i didn't know yeah But, but you know that i never you know, touch your work or anything related to your work. So I didn't know about that part. But I remember for sure you signed that lease with that lady and um, and you you had the place ready for me. So it really, it was, uh, I, you know, like you looked out after for us to get that place. It wasn't, you know, me helping you out. It was the other way around because I was trying to move from Northern Virginia to here. No, I appreciate so, you. I appreciate you incorporating that. And yeah, so and, yeah, I wanted to address that because um, that you know that's just not true that you're just using women like that. And but can then, I um, can I jump in here and say one thing real quick? Like the reason why yeah. we're set, we're addressing this is because you were just telling me that there was a lot more to this phone call that you had with Levi, where he was really prying for all of this dirt that just wasn't there. Right. And I don't I don't remember I don't I don't think I've ever gone into great details with all my answers to him because I just had a feeling maybe somewhat he might use all this someday, you know, when he decides to really move forward with it. I really didn't think he would move forward with it, like to create a video because I thought I had talked him out of doing this so that he can move on with his life and not focus on this. But um, now that he, you know, came up with the video, like it needs to be addressed because some of the stuff he's saying on there is not true. Yeah. Well, and, um, other thing that he uh, mentioned was that you paid me thousands of dollars to keep my mouth shut. And I was like, where is this even coming from? And he was uh, basically saying that's what he heard. And so um, I told him that it was not it and that uh, that money, I think it was like, what, four or $5,000? That money was when we split, like, because I didn't want to go back to Northern Virginia and I wanted to stay in Virginia Beach and I had to basically, you know, stand back on my feet when we split because I was leaving the apartment. Like, that was the money that you gave me so that I can start fresh on my feet and, you know, get a place and stuff. And I don't know how that got misconstrued to, like, paying me thousands of dollars to keep my mouth shut about what? (laughs) Well, I can't (laughs) thank you enough. I cannot thank you enough, Jessica, for addressing these situations and all of these allegations. Um, 
you know, thank you. I'm going to stop yeah. filming now, and I just thank you. You know, um, I think there was one more. Are you sure you want to keep filming? <laughs> okay, yeah, I mean, whatever. I mean, I'm sure there's plenty of things that they were trying to say about me that just weren't true. So, yeah, what else you got? Um, I think... He asked me, um, it wasn't really a question. I think he was just telling me, like asking me about your violent behaviors um, and how you were violent and stuff like that. And uh, he actually, you know, when I, if you listen to that clip on that video, like, I guess people are thinking that I'm putting this blame on me and acting as like, you know, I'm just a domestic abused, domestically abused, you know, whatever and that that's like i'm just so scarred from this but it's really not you know like i i was just saying that you know the truth that i was you know provoking and it led to you know us arguing but anyway so levi kept saying that you know you're like he was trying to portray into this very violent person and stuff like that and he was like why did you you know basically saying why are you why did you put up with all this and stuff like that you know, and like, I just want to say that, like, to be honest, Joe, like you were institutionalized for a long time, you know, and like, I, I don't know how it feels to be institutionalized that long, but I'm assuming that it can make a person like very unstable, you know, confused, aloof, and even like maybe even deranged, you know, when you're coming out of, you know, you know, uh, penitentiary so i understand that and you know like we were trying to work on you know you getting adapted to society and like we were just working on that and catching up on the years that you've missed due to you know your incarceration and so i want people to understand that it wasn't because i was in the it's not like i was in the relationship getting abused it was I understood what you were going through because I I also didn't have a great, you know, teenage years. Like, I've been tr in trouble, and you know it. You know I've been in jail and stuff. So I know what it's like. So, you know, I just wish they don't, these people won't just pin it all against you and think that, you know, I'm just some abused woman here, you know, and that I didn't know what was going on. Like, I knew your behaviors, you know, like, when we were working on it together. Was I violent? You were, I would say that you are violent, but not in a way that people think it's like you go beat up people. You are violent in a way where it was hard for you to tame, tame your anger, I guess. So you would, you know, kind of throw things. I remember you throwing things because you would get really upset. And, you know, it wasn't like you were throwing chairs around, but you were just throwing like little stuff around the house, you know, when you get really angry because you can't control your anger i have but, thrown i have thrown a chair um i've done that really i don't yeah. remember not with not when me and you were together but actually after that so you know oh, for wow. you to for you to mention my anger you know i mean it, it is true i definitely have had and have tried to work on you know problems with anger but yeah. with this whole violence talk i just want to clarify you know was i violent in an abusive way towards you no, I, I don't, I don't, I wouldn't say it like that. We were, honestly, we were arguing constantly. I was just as much violent as you, I would say, because, you know, I'm not the one to just sit there and just take everything either. And so, you know, we always went back and forth and it was never, and then we always, you know, said sorry and then made up right away. You know, like we, we knew that, you know, we were like, when we got you know altercations and stuff like we when we fight like it wasn't like let's kill each other it was always like we fight and then we try to you know figure something out about what to do about this argument and then we you know try to always like it, it wasn't like let's just abuse each other you know no. so i don't know it's just i think it's crazy that they're just all just pinning on you right now and oh it's uh it ain't nothing new this has been an ongoing thing for a little bit of time i'm just grateful to have some defense you know toward these allegations with the fact that i get a chance to talk to you so it is what it is it just comes along with this and it's sad that you got brought into this situation you didn't have to get brought into this situation but this just goes to show the length 
that some people will go to when they're bitter and greet like just jealous and envious and when they when they're mad at you because you got something and they want to try to destroy you they'll go to any lengths that they can to try to do it right and you know i i didn't criticize levi or anything okay i tried to really talk him talk some sense into him and tell him what you're trying to do is not the greatest idea because you're just hurting your own self oh it's gonna know? it's gonna hurt today that's for damn sure when this when this comes out <laughs> Yeah, and so it's just, he might think that I'm, you know, going against him or whatever, betraying him or whatever, but at the same time, I didn't think that he was going to use my recording without my consent either, and that's really, really maddening me. You don't, and, you don't, you don't owe him anything, and, you know, yeah. he deceived you. I want to wrap this up, Jessica, because this is super long. I want to thank you so much for addressing this, and, you know, I, I wish you and your husband nothing but happiness. Thank you. You too. I hope um I hope your wife is okay with all this. I know it's gonna be hard on her. So. Yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Mhm. Mm you stay safe. You as well.